All right, here we are. Let's go. Ajax in blue. Here we go. How's it going today? Really good, really good. How are you? Awesome. Nice. You know, it's a great day. It's always a great day. I love doing podcasts with people, so I'm excited to have you both on. It's been, oh, what has it been, like three weeks since we connected? Three or four weeks, maybe? Yeah, probably actually closer to four or five. Yeah, I'm glad <laughs> we... Uh, I'm glad we finally got this this situated and worked out. You know, I'm excited to have you guys on. Um, how are y'all doing though? I know you were sick, I was sick. It was that's what that's why we got canceled. We had this thing going back and forth where I got super <laughs> sick, and then I was like, "Oh, I'm, I'm finally better." You guys want to do it? And you're like, "Well, now we're feeling sick." So there you go. <laughs> How's it Did going? Did you give it to us, man? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Could have. I was in Orlando, right? No. Oh man. <laughs> you never know. Right, yeah. Florida's yeah, wild right wild. now. <laughs> But everything good health wise, everything good over there? Much better now. Uh, much yeah. better. Much sure. better. Awesome. Yeah, Florida's wild right now. Everything's open. It's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> but are we really, you know, as as Floridians? It's the first time I've had Floridian guests on, I think, actually, besides like friends. But um what do you we what do we think? I mean, are we are we really that mad? Or really are we? I don't know. I mean we're we're doing great. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> being open. Like, we get to go to events, we get to friends uh, I was, I it's was, not weird to go to a bar <laughs> it's not i was a little hesitant at first for sure but then when i saw that it was only small events coming out you know it gave us an opportunity to get vending before the big people came out and i got to play my first set and i wasn't even considering going to clubs at that point and it just one thing turned to another and you know i got another set coming up pretty soon and i have people aren't gonna wear their masks so make sure you're comfortable with that i yeah. guess but yeah, I mean, yeah. that's the thing is like if the way I view it is, yeah, I mean, I don't know about where you guys live, but where I live, I mean, the masks mandate has still been a thing since when everything opened and when everything was, you know, 50%, 75%, I guess, I guess we're a hundred percent open now, technically speaking. Um, I think we've been a hundred percent open. We've got this weird thing going on in Florida right now where like Texas was like, okay, we're a hundred percent open, but Florida is like been a hundred percent open. We just haven't really like lifted the mask mandate yet. It's just like that's there, but everything's open. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, the masks are there because like might as well have all the businesses open as long as people aren't coughing on each other. Yeah, I never – I don't even – I don't know. It's so weird. We live in such a different like area than most people. Like people – I mean you, you've seen it like on Twitter and social media. They're like bashing Florida. I can't believe there's blah, blah, blah. And we're all here just like, well, it's not too bad. Netflix? See Netflix what? is doing something about Florida. It's called – not PTSD, but like post traumatic Floridian disorder or something oh, like wow. that. PTFD. And They're coming for us. They are Is coming right for Florida, our throats. And I have no idea. I saw that today and I had to turn my phone off. I was like, I can't even do, I can't even look at this video oh, right now. My God, I am looking this up right now. <laughs> no way. They're coming up with yeah, a documentary about Florida. Florida. Netflix. <laughs> What? Netflix show about Florida. Okay, here we go. It's going to come up. Like PTFD, something like that. I mean, That's part wild. of Tiger King base here was enough. What are they doing now? Oh, there's so many different ones. Okay, that was not going to help my search. I'll there's find so it. Later. <laughs> there's like all these <laughs> like different shows about, oh, this one was filmed in Florida. This one's about Florida. All these different, <laughs> different things. But no, it's, um. I mean, like you said, it's, uh, it's just been open. I don't know how to explain it to people that aren't from the state, but like our cases aren't as crazy as <laughs> others that are completely closed. We we wear masks, but we're allowed to go do what we want to do. And it seems to be okay. I mean, yeah. even the old people don't complain. They just stay home. Like, I don't understand. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I feel like some of them are kind of happy that they get to, they get to see more of their family while their family is like reaching out to them more. At least it's something one of my, like my family has said, they're like, I'm hearing from more people than I did before. A lot of my friends are reaching out to me that I haven't heard from in, ever. And yeah. they're reaching out to me on a weekly basis now. Yeah. Ch checking in on everybody. And, and right. I know like my dad was, my dad's a little bit older. Uh, he was like thrilled to be able to go eat at his favorite place again. Like I remember like he, <laughs> he's so funny. He's just like, was just so happy to be like, oh my god, I can go sit at my favorite deli again. Like he was just so happy about it, and I was like, are you sure? And he was like, oh, I'm going to get this. Like I'm going to get my favorite sandwich. Like there's no, there's no stopping me. Just and the little thing you miss the most. Yeah, it's true. I mean, the pandemic really did kind of highlight that we took a lot of things for uh, granted that we otherwise didn't really recognize. 
you know, it's kind of humbling in a way. You had all this, all these things taken away from you at once, and you're like, oh shit! All right, it shows guess- how fickle things they are. Like you could really lose everything or something that means a lot to you in a matter of moments. I mean, at one point we were at Okeechobee, and at one point our our Brian was canceled, and it was twelve days, thirteen days in between. Yeah, we were. That was a hard moment. Yeah. Yeah, been, we were, now it's been I don't year. know what it was, but when we went to Oki, like, I feel like I remember starting to see news about it last year, and we were like, ah, oh, no, this is gonna, it's fine, it's, fine. it's gonna be fine, it's probably just like flu, just like Ebola, it's gonna pass. Yeah, what, what's crazy is, is like, the week <laughs> after Okeechobee, I went to like, my company training, like, they flew us all to South Carolina, like, it still hadn't, it still hadn't started yet where they were worried, you know, and like, Sorry. we're... We're like in the airport, and I remember me and my one re- friend were talking about it. Like, do we bring a mask? Like, what? What is? What is the? And, and of course, same thing. Ah, it's not that bad. Yeah, like, yeah, it's not. It's not bad. Don't worry about it. And none of us brought a mask. And I remember, but I remember we landed in Atlanta. We had a layover, and like all of a sudden we get out of the airport, and there were a lot of people with masks. And I remember being like, oh shit, I should have brought a mask. Like, what am I supposed to? Do? <laughs> like, I had no idea, you know. And it wasn't required or anything of anybody yet. But we like started to see more and more people at the major airports like with it. And we were like, oh shit, like maybe this is a lot more serious. And then sure enough, we got back like a week later, everything was shut down. It was like, oh, okay, it was it was serious. <laughs> maybe we should have had maps. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, at the same time, you, you you mentioned, you know, as bad as it was and how fickle things were that like taken away, it was also kind of like a blessing in disguise. I mean, you like you said, you were able to probably able to work on Dose Heroics, your music your clothing line, all that while you're at home. And then on top of it, things open up. A lot of the headliners don't want to play, you know, so it gives you an opportunity to start playing live events. I mean, people can look at it however they want. And like you said, you did everything precautious that you needed to do safe wise. You wanted people to wear masks. Like there's a certain level of like, it's on the individual, you know, at least that's my point of view. People can bash on me all they want for it. But I wear a mask. I, I wore a mask before, I wore a mask before it was even mandated. I remember wearing a mask like in February and they said, maybe wear a mask. It might be a good idea. So, yeah. All right. Yeah. Let's, let's I, do it. And I bought like 10 N95 masks just because I was like, all right, my family and, and some people I'm immediately like close to, uh, and go see every day. Uh, like my girlfriend's family were high risk and, I was like, I'm just going to wear a mask. Like, I'll just tough it out, whatever. And I just did it for, like, the first month. I remember my coworkers were like, what are you doing? Like, why are you wearing that? And then, sure enough, all right, everybody needs the whole company to wear a mask now every day. Like, you guys have to, blah, blah, blah. I was like, ah, I told you guys. Like, this is required. <laughs> I set the trend. Ah. <laughs> literally. literally. <laughs> but it's crazy. But, I mean, like I said, it brought those advantages for you. You got to play a little bit. Mm-hmm. So, Sounds out a lot. What, say that again? So it's helped out a lot, much less being able to play, just the ultimate focus that I got of not chasing festivals. I hate to say that it kind of got in the way, but I was able to take all that creative energy and sit down in my studio. I mean, that was the only other thing that I had to do, but I, I, yeah, we I got were, more progress done than I ever thought I could in a year. We were going to festivals every couple of months. He was going at least to one, I want to say one every month, every other month, and then a, at least a show every other week. So we were doing a lot with events and I feel like that's where a lot of our free time went and it was really nice to kind of have that back mm-hmm. and just to be able to focus because we did start this will be the second year with those heroics but this is the first like the second year as opposed to the first year is where we're getting a lot of work done yeah a lot more work a lot more clothes a lot more designs more artists more content in general than compared to the year before and it is crazy I I couldn't agree more with you, honestly. I mean, it, it, it uh, this past year, like you said, it gave you everybody, especially like us and creatives and stuff, like that kind of break of, okay, we can't go, we can't really be distracted every weekend. We can't, you know, anymore. As much as I, want, I love festivals, I love shows, they are really a distraction because I do like them so much that I would put aside work. I would, I would, sk- yeah. I would call off work, you know, like it's like, <laughs> I mean... <laughs> It's worth it every time, too. <laughs> it, is. it is. It is. That's my worry when all this opens back up. I'm like, oh, God, I'm going to go to, like, so many things. And, like, yeah, I'm gonna... scratching my neck thinking about it. <laughs> literally, literally. Like, um, like what, what just announced that they're coming back? 
Ubi Dubi or Ubi, however you say it. Ubi, Ubi. that's right. <laughs> okay, so my my Texas fam told me it's Ubi Dubi. I don't know if that's true. Uh, I don't have Texas yeah. fam, so I'm going to defer to your of, judgment. A lot of our friends in Florida say Ubi Dubi. I say Ubi Dubi. Oh, oh, yeah, no, yeah, no, no. I said that. Yeah, and, that's Ubi Dubi. That's what I had said. I had said Ubi Dubi, and they were like, um, it's Ubi Dubi. And I was like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> sorry. Like, it looked like. I think Ubi Dubi is more fun, to be honest with you. <laughs> They're watching a non Floridian trying to pronounce Okeechobee for the first time. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> what is the worst you've heard? Probably oh. Okeechobee. Okeechobee. <laughs> I've heard of Okeechobee. Like, if there's an extra O in yeah. there, Okeechobee. or would they put an extra K? The extra K, the is, extra my K is real Okeechobee, funny. Okeechobee, Okeechobee actually is my favorite. Okeechobee, it's Okeechobee. 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 Yeah. Obo I don't know. <laughs> oh my God, that's hysterical. How was that festival? Are you guys like it? One of your faves? It is. Absolutely. Yeah, Church. I... It, it, there's nothing that means. <laughs> Church. Whoa. Taking the it, taking the BTSM uh, slogan there. <laughs> Obi cold for sure. Right? Oh, for sure. But it, it's somewhere to call home and to escape from all the crazy stuff and still feel like you can go anywhere and be okay. It just, I don't know. There's a big feeling of peace at Obi. What makes a festival home to you, uh, to, to you, Blue? Um, the comfortability to be yourself and not be judged for like normal society i guess you know we go in that dress code society where you're you have to wear certain things to yeah. work or you have to dress a certain way you have to represent yourself a certain way you shouldn't have colored hair or face tattoos or piercings or whatever and then you go to a festival and no one cares about any of that everyone's doing their own thing they're dressed however they want they have the crazy hair colors they have these crazy tattoos or fake tattoos whatever it is it doesn't matter Everyone's there just to be happy. That's what. That's what like, home. That's, that's what home means. Part. Yeah. That's home. Now, is there a difference in a home festival versus just another festival you go to? Like, is there a distinct difference, for instance, between like how you feel at Okeechobee versus how you feel maybe at like a EDC Orlando? Um, definitely compared to like EDC, but. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, okay, I know that I, that's a bad example. They are very, very different in their own way. But I, what I mean is like that feeling of like what you just described of like, I can be free. Um, I can do, is there like a different level for you? I think I've, I felt it like imagine before too. I think it just usually is like a camping festival mm -hmm. where it's like just yeah. that real sunk feeling for the next three to four days. I, I, I would, um, but I, I've also not gone that far out. So still, I, I would kind of agree with that. Like I, like there's certain festivals where I feel like it's more of a home than other ones for like lost lands for me. It's like, Everyone's, yeah, <laughs> honestly, they just announced they just announced this today that they might they might it might be back they're so selling, they're selling tickets in may right you just made my day man selling tickets yeah, next nice selling tickets starting next week by the time people hear this next podcast week, they will be selling March. tickets yeah okay. yeah now All he right. did he did say they aren't positive if it will happen but as the way things are going it seems as though it might so it's so, not I'll see you in will. the pit. <laughs> I'll be in the pit. I'll be in the pit. I'll see pit. you there. I'll, I'll see you there. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of slides. It'll be my first one. It'll be your first one? Oh, my I God. I haven't been to Lost Lands yet. Um, the festival we have coming up at Lost but Found is in Oklahoma, and that will be the farthest festival I've been to. I've only gone out to, like, Georgia. It's – um, it's. I mean, we're blessed in Florida – I was just talking about this with Lily with somebody else the other day. Like we're very blessed in with Florida to have six festivals. And especially bass music. Uh yeah. I mean now that bass music is coming a little bit bigger here for sure. I felt like Forbidden Kingdom popping up. Um That was a nice surprise. Yeah, I like I love Forbidden Kingdom. Oh my god, yeah, that's right. so great. It's it always so... comes on my birthday too, so it's always a, it's always a celebration. Oh yeah, except for this year. <laughs> <laughs> thanks <laughs> <laughs> that was my last festival for the pandemic actually oh, so okay. i got that in but thanks. yeah it's we're very blessed here to have six festivals uh one actually two i would consider very big and then oki maybe medium tier getting up to that bigger tier festival style now smf medium tier then we got uh, swanee and 
Forbidden Kingdom on on the smaller side currently, but we're six is like uncomparable. Like the only other place that maybe has six is Southern California, maybe I could think of. But yeah, we we really got it out here. And then there's also like Three Points and Welcome to Rockville. Tipper and Friends comes down here. You could if it's on the right year, you can do ten festivals in Florida. Yeah, if you're, if you're really trying. To it's and it's hard to like. That's the thing with with having so many so close. It's very hard to like branch out and leave because yeah. every two months technically there's one festival and you have to like pick. You have to pay that money and you're like ah, I can't travel again. But like <laughs> I know like literally like in right before the pandemic, me and my friends had all started working like full time jobs and all that. So we were like all right, let's start really picking and choosing these festivals you want to travel to and let's make it happen. And we did like Vegas, we had done Spring Awakening um, and we were going to go do uh, Vegas again. I had Electric Forest, I had Lost Land. Oh, and Lost Lands, we did. I was going to do Lost Lands again. and But it's crazy. It's just, it, you get, and then you have to lose the ones that are in the state. You know, you just like, oh, I can't go to this one. I can't, even, I can't afford it. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, sorry, I messed up. There's four shows going on right now. And then right when you make that plan, they'll drop Zomboy and Flux Pavilion and Adventure Club all yeah. on the same day. <laughs> yeah, and all your like other friends might go that aren't originally like they might just say, "Oh, we're gonna go now," and then you're like, "Fuck, I gotta go." Like, <laughs> you got that FOMO. You don't want to miss out. You're like, "Oh, I gotta go." How do I FOMO when the show's an hour and a half away from my house? Oh, no, for real, that was <laughs> you make it work. <laughs> I remember That's like, go. yeah, I remember with um, EDC Las Vegas back in 2019. I like we went and SMF was the weekend after that. And we went to, and then we're all, all of us months before we're not going to go to SMF. We're not gonna go. No one's going to go. <laughs> and then like Stop. a month before EDC and the festival, they, someone bought their ticket and we're like, we're going. And then someone else bought it. They're going. And then someone else bought it. And I was like, oh, fine, we'll go. And then we all went still. <laughs> it was like, no, why are we doing this? We went to back to back weekend festivals. It was crazy. <laughs> Oh, you're there on God. crutches <laughs> literally after that we were dead we were all napping every day for like a week oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. that's so crazy right um, i feel like back-to-back festivals is the cure to covid like getting covid antibodies you can do two <laughs> shows back-to-back sick you'll probably be okay <laughs> uh, yeah you might get it too yeah <laughs> it's it's uh that that's a little that's not safe raving, you know? It's not safe. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get into that. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, don't go to festival sick. Please don't. Stay home. No, Stay home. <laughs> That's so funny. Um, Let's get into that while we're here. Why not? We're talking about festivals. We might as well get into that. Um, We were talking a little bit before we got on about, like, good habits to get into for raving and for those that are getting into the scene, for those of us that are going back to it. You know, are are the other states that aren't open that are going back to raving now um, and stuff like that. Let's kind of go over that stuff on what's what's some safe tips we got going. I know you guys are part of. Um, it is safe raving, right? I have it right here. Sorry. Uh, dance safe. That's part dance of dance safe the is what it is. With. Um, but part of what we like to promote is definitely arm reduction in regards to um, being safe out at these festivals and at these events when it comes to. Um, first of all, wearing your mask. If it's required, just wear it. No, it's not hurting you. It's not hurting anybody else to so just wear one. I wore one for the dust. Before COVID was a thing, I was yeah. wearing it for dust. I'm an asthmatic. Oh my gosh. If you suffer from breathing issues out there at a festival, you probably should just wear a mask. Just because. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you're, pro- you're probably help- doing yourself a lot more help anyway. Um, but n- and all, all, um, not just with the masks, but something else that we're kind of stuck on right now is hearing protection there's a lot of people that we know who are they don't like earplugs they don't like having to stop the music or turn down the music Mm -hmm. and i love loud music everyone loves loud music but i don't like my ears ringing and Uh, i want to be able to enjoy loud music for a long time yeah i I really (laughs) would like to be able to feel like i can go to events and go to concerts Uh, my grandpa is in his 70s and he's deaf in one of his ears and he attributes that to concerts he says he was a stage hand they didn't have earplugs or anything like that when he was uh, doing it he said that i was on the right i was on this side of the stage and this is the ear so that would make sense <laughs> from from 16 to 22 i was you know for you know i had 
my rail riding phases and my back I usually hang out by the back sub now so um yeah. you know I, I feel like I've exposed my ears to way too much and I feel like <laughs> we all get better at raving you know sometimes you remember to bring certain things or you know you have you know see the setting spots for your buddies but the one lesson that I really wish I learned before anything else was wearing my earplugs like my ears have rung since we started talking and it's just especially for me since I'm a producer I need to be mixing I need to be like working with you know Noise. yeah I need to be, be able to focus with my ears and if they're if if I could have just protected myself I would have done myself a huge favor um, other than earplugs if your ears hurt just get away from the speakers like well, your, your body your that. body will let you know it's a little harder when you're intoxicated but i feel like it's still you're still able to tell it, it, can, there. it can really hurt your brain not just killing off the way your ears work because your ears um hear sound using these little hairs and they basically just fry out when they're when the noise is too loud yeah they'll um, bend or and they can't grow back so once that's done it's done um and when you're right by the speaker once you're i think it's that like the numbers are like if you're there for all of seven seconds with mm -hmm. the music up over where it usually is there's like 95 to 110 decibels right if you're there in front of the speaker your ears can only handle seven to ten seconds without, without like without fully damaging them damage. after that you're you're, you're risking more. damage yeah. and you got it so if you're i mean there's a reason why they give out. away free <laughs> earplugs at lost lands we but outside of lost lands which obviously like if, everywhere if it, else. ask any of your friends that have gone to lost lands if they don't wear your plugs or if they didn't wear your plugs and ask if they you know what their hearing sounds like they'll probably go what what's going on yeah I was supposed to, the music dies down <laughs> the music dies down at the end of the night and everyone's like where is that we like, lost jimmy <laughs> They're yeah, like, oh, Everyone's God. Yelling they can't hear each other. Yeah, for real. They can't hear themselves. If we uh, started uh, using a decibel reader app on our phones, just when we're at festivals. Oh, really? You know, to get an idea of how loud it is versus that 85 threshold. And we were surprised that even most house parties range around 90, 92. You know, I've, I've got one small loudspeaker, 15 inches. I take it into a house. I can blast 90 no problem so, <laughs> that's crazy uh, yeah the house and, is bumping that's a loud that's a loud <laughs> house party right there <laughs> yeah, i'll tell my neighbors <laughs> <laughs> that's so crazy uh, they know. We, we're in a town now so they gotta deal <laughs> yeah, same the neighbors are hearing everything you do basically <laughs> you can't help it um I'm right next to the studio too <laughs> oh my god that's too funny um it is interesting though that it's it's not i mean it's starting to be talked about like i feel like right before the pandemic things were people were starting to talk about like being careful with your hearing and, and wearing head um earplugs and stuff it was just kind of starting to get like a kind of little pickup and then of course pandemic hit now that's that's been talked about ever since but excuse me i'm glad we're talking about it because i i agree it's it's something that's like i said very rarely talked about that actually is super important and can create longevity for you to go to concerts and do other things for the rest of your life versus just be deaf the entire time yeah, um, like, it, why, why do it yeah, and I always get people saying, um, oh, it doesn't sound the same. That's what the big one I hear. Oh, it doesn't sound as good. Well, a lot of, I hear that too. A lot of the first timer earplugs are, you know, ones that you get, especially for free. They're the orange foam ones. Oh, yeah, those are taking yeah. a chunk out of your couch and putting it in your ears. <laughs> from your couch <laughs> uh, sorry, but, um, but, uh, yeah so we started putting out these high fidelity earplugs they're a little more hearing protection than the one of the excision shows i was a little worried about it at the beginning uh, but honestly i i love them just it doesn't really mess with the audio quality but it takes away from the actual pressure on the eardrum and now, after six, eight months, I mean, I've been using them for longer, but after a few months of using my earplugs, I can, I'm a lot more sensitive to how damaged my hearing is getting. And maybe it's just because I don't have much hearing left because I used to not wear earplugs. But um, it just, I, I go to a show and I'll have to put them in. I got to keep them on my keys now. Yeah, I understand. Oh, I'm trying to pull up the, uh, actually, let me see. Let me get this going while we're doing this, while you're talking about it. There we go. There's your headphone right there while we got it. Um, there we go. Nice little case. <laughs> yeah. I love these. These are, yeah, these are awesome. Uh, I have the ones from Excision that we were talking about that they gave away at Lost Lands, which are, were, to me, blew my mind. I, I was, like, shocked at how good they were, and I personally didn't think there was 
that big of a difference in the sound quality. I mean, I was wearing them. I started wearing them more and more. Um, and what's another good brand? Uh, Eargasm has really good ones from what I understand. I, I haven't personally used them. I think Eargasm has a... makes excisions. I believe they. I believe you're correct. Actually, I do think you're yeah, right. I had to do a lot of research to figure out who had. I had to do a lot of digging to figure out <laughs> exactly what kind of hair plug Excision had because we wanted to see what the difference was between ours and his. So and what's the difference? The, well, the biggest difference is that, well, not just the shape and the size and okay. the color, but it's the um, how much the decibel um, reduction is. And Excision's earplugs only reduce Maybe up 16. to 16 decibels, and ours reduce up to 27. Oh. So ours will definitely mute a lot of the, or not mute, but they'll lower a lot of the bass, the big bass sounds and the more damaging sounds. Whereas excisions just add like a light. A level. light, yeah, a light a level. Light. Hey, oh. I'm in here. Okay. I'm making sure those bass waves don't hit too hard, but they're still gonna be in here. Yeah. Um. It's so just, excisions it's a little, definitely it's a little work. Extra they still work well, mm -hmm. but um, they saved me for two years. Yeah, sure, they still work, them. especially like indoors or if you're. Um, if you don't have like just for in general, they're really comfortable too. That's yeah. why I like his. Um, but ours are just they're a little bit stronger and they have a little filter inside that you can take out and it'll lower the reduction as well. Yeah, it's a little um, easier to clean ours as well, just because you can take the filter out. But you know, mad mad props to Excision for giving out free earplugs at Lost Lands. That and was we, a solid move. That's actually also, how I started wearing earplugs. I that's said, like, oh, yeah. I, same. That's exactly how I started. <laughs> I like. I loved them so much. I loved the little case. I just love for some reason that little <laughs> canister. That was a, that was something we had. I we still, were just like, there's no way we're getting earplugs. Not getting earplugs. I still have so, the case to my other earplugs on like use, dude, so I can have some Excision on the key. <laughs> dude, I lost mine on like the third day, and I went home and bought another pair just so I could have the case. I was like, I didn't want the case. I wanted. I don't know why. I was so attached to that little case. I was like, I just want it to carry around with me and <laughs> leave them on the desk at work. Yeah, it didn't matter. I just was excited to have it. Look at my hair plugs. <laughs> and they're 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 perfect. Like you can take them to an event. You can wear them like if you're in not normally, but if you're in like heavy traffic. I don't know if you've been in heavy traffic over on like I four when they're doing all the construction and stuff. Oh my god. Um, down here, but it gets really loud, and it's a lot when you're sitting in. Stop those I don't think you should wear those when you're I4, you're not going to hear the ambulance behind you. I4, <laughs> <laughs> four might be the worst highway in the world. I hate oh that highway. <laughs> I, it, I would, the, I would agree. the random, we're going to get off topic here because I don't, it, I just how much I hate it. The <laughs> random know. spurts of traffic throughout I4 are on, it's, it's, it blows <laughs> my mind. There will be like from between Lakeland and Orlando, there's a stretch of like just wilderness. It's just trees and cow pastures and there's, there's nothing there. There's no reason for traffic. And yet every time I drive, I hit a traffic jam right then and there for about 10 <laughs> miles through nowhere. And then sure, sure enough, you get to the end of it and it just, pick, it just picks up out of nowhere. Everyone People just starts going, going 60 again. You're like, what the hell were we going 20 miles an hour for? It's unbelievable. Hey, cows. <laughs> You wanted to see the scenery. I, I, it's. I'll show you the scenery. I'll have to post it. It's just trees. There's nothing. There's no reason to be stopped. There's no accident. There's nothing. We're just stopped going 20 miles an hour, and then out of nowhere, well, let's go 80 again. Who cares? Like, it's just, <laughs> I hate it. Oh, I hate it so much. I hate it so much. Traffic's the worst at any forum, even after festivals. I'm like, this is just horrible. Oh, after Obi is terrible. It took it took us about six hours to get home. 2017, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, Why is that? Oh, yeah, yeah, we'll hang out. We'll hang out with everybody when they leave. Everybody left when everyone in our squad left when the whole festival was leaving. <laughs> and we it was this. It was a wreck. Is it the like guy a behind one me fell asleep at the wheel and took his foot off the brake and rear ended me? We oh there God. And we were we had to hang out like <laughs> then, yeah and then we had to drive in front of him for another three hours it was awkward it was really awkward oh god and is that because like there's one road in one road out kind of thing yeah it was literally just the there's it's a two-lane road one goes north one goes south and it's just terrible just terrible if Damn. you go the wrong way you're I did that. You're fucked. Is that what you're gonna say? Yeah, uh, <laughs> you can say that. That's fine. <laughs> Dang. Yeah, I, I hate it. I hate. Yeah, they just can't. You can't deal with them. Absolutely. No, uh, too much. Um, <laughs> what are some other things we were talking about earlier with with 
safe oh, raven time. Right yeah, yeah. We, we talked about hearing. We talked about um, that's really all. I guess all we did. We did talk about. We went on tangent uh, about hearing. It's important though. <laughs> Like I feel like I'd be beating a dead horse a little bit. I guess it'd be a dead camel, but drink water. Yeah. Like, <laughs> so many people. You have these lines. That, you have these lines. I've just been killing me throughout the entire night. <laughs> I'm just letting, yeah, just letting you know right now. Like, you, what did you say earlier before we recorded? Oh, let's see if you can repeat it. Oh, uh, uh, it was. Um, oh, we were talking about um, like yeah, taking substances home before a festival. And like drugs are like sports. You have to practice. <laughs> You're gonna get hurt. <laughs> <laughs> Drugs are like sports, everybody. They, you can practice them before you take them. <laughs> but, um, me yeah, I mean, I feel like we've all been dehydrated in a crowd and said, I I don't need to go get water till the set's over. And then yeah, and we've all been the there. That's not, that's not good. It's not, minus the fact that it's not good for your organs, it's a sign that you are not prepared. <laughs> <laughs> you did not <laughs> practice. <laughs> we, we have this thing when one of us has like a headache or we're not feeling well. We'll do, all right, show me your tongue. And if your tongue is oh gray or it's crackly or, you know, it looks like looks like you're dying. looks like a desert, yeah, you will you know you need water. And it's saved us at festivals so yeah, many times. It's all shriveled it's up and old. Or even just during the day. Like, if I'm in a mood or if I'm just, like, really cranky, he just, like, looks at me, looks at me, show me your tongue. And I'll be dehydrated and it's. Yeah, so. Apparent. So. <laughs> tongue checks, yeah, that'll that'll, that'll save Tongue checks. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, first show back. I'm gonna be doing it to people. Tongue checks. Let's go. Open them up. <laughs> All right, three o'clock. It's time. <laughs> <Three o'clock. laughs> I'm definitely adding that to my Before rave. Said, at the water station. All right, let me see your tongue. <laughs> definitely adding that to my rave dad list for sure. Tongue checks, <laughs> no doubt about it. Um, but yeah, water is super. I mean, it's so. Not to overstate the obvious, like you said, but it's so important. I mean, it really is. Our group. And then the other thing that people like, it goes hand in hand with water is like, depending on the substance you're on, like, make sure you go to the bathroom. Sounds really weird, but like, de- like, oh, yeah. make sure, you, like, literally, like, if some people I know, it's like, when is the last time you go to the bathroom? Like, they feel like shit. And I'm like, when's the last time you go to the bathroom? Like, I've dead ass said that to somebody. And they're like, um, like before we left, I was like, "Go fucking to the bathroom right now! I don't have to go." I was like, "I guarantee you, you have to go." <laughs> and then like, it, I was like, Dude, "It's Saturday at the festival. <laughs> <laughs> it's been two days, bro." Yeah. <laughs> and then they go. They like, uh, but even like, not even like that. Like, even if they like go piss, it's so funny. Like, if they hold it for too long, they have no idea. I'm like, "Go piss!" And they like go and they like, oh, I'm just like, <sighs> I'm like, ah, oh, no shit, bro! You held it for eight <laughs> hours. You didn't realize it, like. <laughs> like You've been literally clenching for. Yeah, you're in the festivals like, like clenching, closing your crossing your legs. <laughs> I'm just shuffling, dude. I'm just shuffling. <laughs> I'm just shuffling. <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah, yeah. So do both, go hand in hand, and be safe on your substances. I don't think we didn't talk too much about that. I mean, well, I mean, we can't, but it, just be safe. Test your shit, right? Yeah. That's what. Take it, yeah. take, take it at the house first. You know, don't buy something in a crowd. Don't Definitely buy something. Definitely recommend doing a test kit. Uh, Dan Safe has them available as well. Um, so definitely test your stuff. And look at the colors. See that you know what you're taking. I can't tell you how many times I've... Mm, there's this one time, actually. <laughs> we've had friends at a festival who would buy something that they from someone they don't they know. They buy it while owning a test kit. While, we, while there's a test kit it was present. There, it was, it was there, there ready to be used. <laughs> and bought the thing. Guy left as mysteriously as he came. And then they test it after already spending their money. Find out that there's terrible things in it and that they're dirty and they're not what they want, wanted in the, to begin with. Got that meth. <laughs> yes. And then, and, <laughs> it was a big old combination. And, and it, <laughs> it always is. You would have been so much. Uh, it, was, it was just silly to see happen and then know that there, there was already things in place yeah, and not right. have it this happen. It just threw away money. It, it was crazy to see. But now we're like, always very adamant about like all right so where'd you get this okay um, let's test it like <laughs> are you sure yeah yeah not to go too further into it but your buddy probably doesn't know either like most yeah. people are like oh yeah dude, it's fine it's like oh how do you know it's fine well i've taken it three times <laughs> yeah i bet you think it's fine and my buddy says <laughs> You're it's good. Right i trust my buddy here. Yeah. i know Stuff your buddy like and your buddy got it from a buddy he trusts and that buddy got it from a buddy he trusts and that <laughs> buddy <laughs> got it yeah. and just goes that down the list probably has no idea what he's talking about <laughs> literally yeah yeah it's so simple like you said just get a test kit i mean it's something your group can split 
five people, six people can split the cost of one, and it costs everybody like maybe eight dollars to know wow, your. They last, they last they for last, months too. They last for oh six yeah. Months. yeah, 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 yeah. All you have to do is get the little. Chemicals and you're good. Six months of religious use, just <laughs> yeah. well, they expire after a while. Yeah. Oh, they, okay. I'm sorry, I don't know. <laughs> no, I, I, yeah, I've never, I've never emptied a test tube without expiring. That's so funny. I don't think we've, I don't think we've gotten to the I don't think my memory would be capable. Of yeah, yeah. How does this work again? <laughs> what happened? In spring of '09. <laughs> God, yeah. Where yeah. was I? We've had a buddy who did <laughs> did too much, and his brain went to been crap doing? for a while it's crazy to see uh, that man. to see that spiral down you're like whoa okay i'm gonna stay clear of that uh bro <laughs> i don't want to be anywhere near well i i have the best story of the recovery you know some some stories don't come back that's the scary part right and everyone thinks you know all, everyone thinks it can everyone thinks they can and and mm-hmm. granted uh, he's doing a lot better now i wouldn't say that's he's completely 100 percent back but he's better <laughs> you know but still it's yeah never you ever have friends like that it's important to address that i mean that's what a good friend would do is hey you're kind of scaring us with what you're doing yada yada at least that's my opinion a good friend would do that they won't let you just go off the rails yeah. fun mm-hmm. fun friends like the, like we'll let you go off the rail good friends won't <laughs> let you you know what i'm saying like fun friends will yeah. be like oh he's fun i'm having a great time we're having a great time <laughs> What's wrong? <laughs> but like, <laughs> he passed out for five hours. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he doesn't remember the last five weeks. Like, what do you mean? What's wrong? <laughs> Crazy stuff. Um, also, just looking out for your buddies too. You gotta look out for everybody, even when you see them sick at like a festival or you see someone you don't know and they're hurt. Yeah, yeah. see them. somebody have an issue, help them. You know, if you're wondering whether or not you should help somebody, then you should probably, probably. be helping them. You should probably already be helping them. That's and a great way of putting it. Passed out, just check on them. Maybe 30 minutes, 20 minutes. And, you know, a lot of people, they get left in another room. People think they're passed out. And you come back right. to someone whose brain is decayed because of oxygen asphyxiation. You know, you don't come back from just being what your buddy thought was asleep, man. So, I mean, that's probably my last note on harm reduction. I'm starting to get a little dark there. No, but, I, I think that's boring. that's totally uh, – that's, that's what you should do. That's what good friends do again. That's what good people do. Check on them. Do, check yeah. on people. That, like you said, that's a great rule of thumb. Honestly, is like if you think you should be helping them, probably should. Yeah, it's a great yeah. rule of thumb. Uh, I definitely. I remember this time that it was at Forbidden last this this past year, mm-hmm. and um, there was a group of people in front of us that were dancing, having a good time. But they, one of their friends was falling over, kept falling over, and couldn't get back up at one point, mm-hmm. and it scared the hell out of me. And so I go up to him, little me, can't pick up six foot guy over here. And I look at all of his friends. I'm like, you know, he's not okay. The med tent is 20 feet away. Please take him to the med tent. And all of them are looking around panicking. Like, how are we going to take him to the med tent? We're all fucked up. Ooh, how are we going to do this? That's literally what and they're for. <laughs> I, I think I had to look at each individual in the eyes and say, take this man to the med tent right now. And sure enough, eventually they all got together and, took five people to carry this guy but still they got him up and got him over Mm -hmm. to where he was okay but i it just scared me to see someone question whether or not they should help their friend yeah who's clearly needing help Uh, you're not gonna go you're not gonna get put down you know legally if you take somebody that to one that needs help if you're if you're fucked up or if you have you know a felony or two in your pocket or something and you're afraid of taking your friend to go get help you are missing out because mm-hmm. you're not going to get there. You're not going to get searched or persecuted as laws no. protecting people against that. There are. Yeah. It's a, it's, yeah, it's yeah, key. Absolutely. We've had to, we've had to take a friend to the med tent once. And, um, same thing, like you're saying that there was never, there's never a question directed toward us, but what did you got? You know, ne- never was that. It was, what did he do? What's going on? And, mm-hmm. and you just tell him what you know and what you don't know. And, they go from there you know and again you have to answer those questions as truthfully as possible because they're trying to diagnose what's going on you know they're trying to figure out okay if it's this we give him this but if it's something else we don't want to give him that you know what i'm saying it depends on what the situation is of course but yeah. it's super important that you're honest and tell them because they, they're only there to help they're they can't they're not going to turn you over they they like you said there's laws protecting that for that reason that people are okay and all that stuff so Definitely, definitely important. Use the med tent. They're there for that reason. Yeah, 
and communicate sure. with your buddies what you're taught what you're taking you know ask your friends what they're taking when they're taking yeah we and that you was try to take some yeah. med kit and it's like oh he's been gone for an hour i don't know that's yeah. a lot harder yeah. to help him. that's what we had the issue was our buddy went off on his own and uh it was at uh it was that Buku and it was like mixed, you know, mixed music from EDM to yeah. rap to I don't know, I actually remember what else was there, but there was a bunch of stuff. <laughs> yeah, the line of always looked good. It, it it's there. a gr- honestly highly recommend that festival. Great festival. Okay, cool. So definitely check that out whenever that comes back. But uh, he he went off on his own to go see someone he wanted to go see, and and we were all together, and uh, he said, "Oh, I texted you guys that I I did something with one of some guy over there," and we were like uh none of us saw that you know like you gotta double check with like he said he texted us service doesn't work you know maybe someone got it but someone else didn't get it and uh and someone gave him like the okay like oh yeah just take take this it'll be fine and sure enough he took you know something else on top of something else and it didn't go over well and and um you know so definitely communicate over communicate that if you really have to for sure you don't want that miscommunication happen and end up at the med tent it's not fun not a fun night yeah, you don't want to. You don't want to spend your festival that way. Yeah. No, no, for sure. You no, you don't want to pay attention. But when yeah. it happens, know your you limits. Know, know your limits, people, as well. Yeah. I mean, just listen to your body. Listen yeah. to listen to your body. Meditate. Take a deep breath. If it feels like it's dying, <laughs> don't take more. Probably, <laughs> <laughs> probably, pretty, good rule. probably pretty good. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Time, time redoses. We all suffer from time dilation, especially at a festival. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, why does this stuff feel like it's three hours? You know why it feels like it's three hours. <laughs> <laughs> you're, going, you're going through a rough time. <laughs> um, and then uh, if you throw up, that's another thing. I, I do not know how many people I've seen or I know that throw up and then they're like, 20 minutes later, like, I'm ready. No, you're not. No, you're not. No, you're not. <laughs> Sit down. Sit down. <laughs> I'll give you some maybe an hour and a half. Maybe. We'll, we'll negotiate on that one. <laughs> we'll, we'll see. I always be like, yeah, I don't know. You need to take another 20 minutes. And then like, I'm like, oh, no, no, no. another 20 minutes. Like an hour and a half later, I'm like, all right, you're probably good now. But like, uh, yeah, 20 minutes, you're out of your mind. <laughs> <laughs> an hour and a half later, show me your tongue. <laughs> <laughs> show me your tongue. Tongue check. Let me see it. <laughs> Looks a little green. Nope, nope. You're not ready yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh um I, i'm glad we could talk about that stuff i think that stuff's so important and uh i you know you guys i can tell stand for that stuff and it's important that i want to talk about with that with you guys but let's pivot here a little bit i want to talk about dose heroics i mean the whole reason i got you guys on was to talk about your your record label your clothing line all that stuff um i love what you guys are doing i love the entrepreneur spirit i love the fact that you have all of these different businesses and i'm gonna call them businesses i don't know you know whatever you want to call them but different things in the works that you're doing full-time and and, um you guys work hard you're and you're again you're doing unique things that are not everyone's doing um so let's talk about this the label and clothing brand stuff let's get into it so dose heroics is what it's called um where did the name come from where'd you guys come up with that what was that did you have a heroic dose, and then that's how you got it? Uh, it was it was pretty. It was, it was, close. It was pretty close. It was pretty close to that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Well, I started thinking about how if I wanted to represent artists as a group, I didn't want to do it as a medium, and I wanted to do it as more of a taste or like an inflection. And I've always been, you know, driven to psychedelics, whether on a spiritual, recreational you know, especially like inspired in my own music. Mm. And, you know, I have a lot of friends that are painters and musicians and places that I can see or inspirations that I can see coming from, you know, similar places like these experiences. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like if, you know, we were all repping what we were trying to rep at the same time, we'd be able to push each other up. So it would be being each other's heroes through Ghost, you know, Ghost Heroics. And then that went into us having seen so many people get hurt in the festival community and just saying well how can we adding on to that how can we be better we were already doing that and then we kind of realized oh well our brand is called dose rose yeah it was it was kind of already on brand for us so it had been something we had already been doing and been passionate about and the name just kind of fixed fixed itself but once i finally like said like how can i say dose heroic or heroic dose but make it sound like heroics is what we're doing. Once I just sat there and mixed with this, we talked. We bit. talked it out like four or five times, and then it was one of those moments where you, you said it out loud, yeah. and I was like, "That's it." Was like, like, can we do that? Like, we can do that. I was like, "That was it." <laughs> it, 
it clicked. So its meaning essentially is that it's that it, uh, I just had the words and I totally lost them. But uh, <laughs> so the meaning behind Dose Heroics is that you're there and you're there helping people in, in a sense. Like you're uplifting the community through Dose Heroics in a sense. Is that kind of what I, a, the gist of it? It's a part of that anybody can do it. You know, right. anybody yeah. anybody can you know anybody I hate to say that anybody can dose, but anybody can really be a hero, and that's what yeah. we wanted. That's encourage kind of people to do for each idea. other but it's also what we're trying to do for ourselves by you know creating a small you know network of people that are somewhat local to try and you know bounce promotion off of each other yeah i mean that's what the whole i mean in my opinion that's what all the podcasting and social media content community is about at least that's i think my whole view of it is we have everybody yeah, have people on i help you guys you help me type of thing whoever it is it's just like it's again it's help like you said everyone's their own hero in their own way and they can be they just gotta do it. They gotta have the, the means to do it, and and obviously, yeah, have, I, and, and I good intentions. Out and trying to support community, dude. It's awesome. Sorry, I cut you off. No, you're you're great. You're fine. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, that's something I I think it's so important, uh, big or small, to always support the community, like and and those that are in it. I just think it's important uh, to do that. You know, you and vice versa. They're gonna do the same for you. It, it it's. And I'm not doing it in a in a sense of like I'm gonna do it for them or they're gonna do it for me. Like that's never my intention. I, you know, like with with this podcast itself, uh, whenever I have artists on or even just people that with bigger following than me, I never I've never asked anybody to promote it. I never do. I never. And if they choose to, they do. Uh, and if they don't, they don't. I. I but I've never been like, hey, I'm, uh, you know, while you're here and you're on, like, can you promote it? I've just never. I don't even mention that when I reach out to people. It's just not. Like it doesn't seem like a good intention to me, you know? Yeah, exactly. It seems like I'm going into it for the wrong reasons. Uh, and and it is. That is wrong. I mean, that's kind of selfish to be like, oh, I want you on because it'll help me. Like, it's not, you know what I mean? It's like, it's dirty. It's slimy. It's sales. <laughs> it's <dirty. I> mean, <laughs> it, yeah. <it's, laughs> oh, my gosh. But, um, <laughs> dirty. You're going to make me laugh. I can't believe I described it as that. But, yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So with the music line and the label line, what is it you're trying to inspire and help create with that? Hey, Jack, what you got? Um, yeah, where can you st- – I threw you a curveball there. You ready? Yeah, I did. <laughs> uh, well, one of the, like I kind of was building into before, one of the biggest things is I have – you know, I have, I've seen so many people have all this time and all this talent and, you know, really expressing themselves creatively, but they don't have a platform. And it's just, it's a shame. And I feel like all these pieces that people are performing in, mm-hmm. they're all very interconnected, especially yeah. if, you know, if you place people in the same place in the same, you know, in the same conscious bubble. But if really, it's really about just getting our legs right now. Like I've, I'm trying to put on as many people as I can. I record, you know, just locals that aren't a part of Ghost Heroics. And I'm sitting, I'm trying to find more artists to represent but it really breaks down to me having to, you know, push myself more as an artist because the, the Dos Rose label still needs a main act to be able to, you know, generate popularity. Because if we're not, yeah, if you're not making music, you can't make it. If we're not representing anybody that's making music, why is anybody that's making music not going to be represented by us? Absolutely makes sense. So I'm gonna throw you another question: How do you balance that of creating the label as well as promoting your personal music and your personal brand? Because Although they're tied together, you as a DJ and producer have your own brand. You know, it, it's just like you got the artists like Sudden Death and, and uh, Uber and Marada, and yet they are all signed to a, you know they're their own brand. Yet they're signed to the label, and the label's its own brand. How do you balance doing both? Well, honestly, I have a lot of help. I have a lot of help from Blue. She does a lot of for us for when it comes to branding, when it comes to keeping us just afloat on instagram on social media she keeps rock keeps us rocking keeps us you know people paying attention to us yeah. and i i really don't have the mind for that i'm more this is what we're trying to do and get it done and she is putting us in front of people and i i like to say that you know having a music career is kind of like owning a business like if you want to get to a certain point you're not going to be able to do it by yourself mm-hmm. you're going to have to let go some piece of control and you're going to have to come to it so for any status of dose heroics being able to manage itself as a label and being able to be seen i would not have been able to do it without her and all her work yeah i do all like the website organization i try to keep all the tabs on people that we work with i try to make 
everything as organized as possible. I balance our books for the most part. He does our taxes, but I, I do some of the other stuff. Um, I also help us run our like funding and all the things that we try to reach out to other artists for what we can do for them um, and how we can help promote them in the area in general. So I do all that kind of stuff. So he can have the time to focus on just Ajax. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I get to get him in those moments. It's rare, but with social media, it's really, it's really hard to capture him doing like his silly stuff like yelling at the monitors when music is too loud or playing a video game or getting stuck between a transition that he didn't like and like a mix um it's hard to capture those moments when you're trying to like, manage everything but it's been getting easier with like working in the same space now we work in the same space which has been really helpful for getting his mm -hmm. brand and the strokes kind yeah. of up. once we um diffuse the fact that we were around each other all the time <laughs> it took a little bit to get used to. Yeah. Of course, and naturally. So how valuable yeah. is that partnership between you two? Uh, it seems like you've each got like your own set that you bring to the table, and it's very complimentary. Would you agree, disagree? Uh, agree. Absolutely. It's, yeah. it's completely invaluable. I yeah. would not I couldn't put a, I couldn't put words to it how, how much we're leaning on each other. It doesn't work without the other one. And That's true. Have you both tried doing some something similar like this solo and it didn't work out and now you're realizing the value of a partner, a partnership in a sense, and how that, that leaning on each other creates it uh, a lot easier and smoother operating system? We were... That was very, uh, com that was very complex, we were, sorry. We were, <laughs> no, don't worry. We were building Dos Heroics around the same time that I was learning, able, or I was learning to produce and be able to record and... and to be able to bring my own ideas and you know work with other people in the community so i hadn't really been able to try to start a label because there was nothing to there was nothing to represent so while i was building those skills we were also building the death brand so, I, um, to answer though i haven't tried to do anything like this by myself um i know that you did a little bit of music stuff by yourself before mm -hmm. with like um rapping and um everything before you start like producing heavily yeah but as far as like making a business out of it no this is the first time yeah it, is. it is best done this way yeah, like, with we, a partner we've just been if i was doing this by it, myself i don't think I, I think i'd quit yeah i mean speaking for myself on the one man show at the moment it's very difficult <laughs> It's hard to do. I'm, I'm trying. I haven't been posting as much. You know, something kind of seems to slip the cracks a little bit, whether, whatever it may be. You know, but um, it is. It's 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 very, it's unique. It's great to have a partnership that works together. Is, is um something that I'll stress to you guys. I I I actually had a um I had a small business with two friends, and we're still friends to this day. There was no bad blood, nothing. We ended up stopped doing what we were doing together, but we all had like a business aspect to each other. We all had that different, we all wanted to do the business side of things and not so much the other stuff. And, you know, as great as friends we were, we got along great in that aspect. We all had the same similar idea, but we clashed on like the ideas because we all were kind of business idea people and doers rather than just, Someone does this, someone does that. We all have our own part within it. And that's something that's super valuable. And it's something I, I would certainly now, as I've learned, is stress enough to people is have people that complement your skills not have the same skills as you. Because if you, they have the same skills as you, what's the good of two people that can video edit when someone needs to do the, the person in front of the camera? You know, <laughs> in a sense, you know what I'm saying? But like, mm -hmm. um, it's so valuable. And it's something I've learned through unfortunately a failure but hey you learn something from something um but yeah definitely it's a it's key and it seems like you guys have a great thing going great chemistry going with this on how you get it done and and how the growth of it has gone so far thank you welcome of course um blue i want to talk to you about the clothing line i know you kind of handle that a little bit more let's dive in a little bit of that tell me the ins and outs of that how did you when did that start what was the idea behind it and are you the designer behind all of the brands I'm uh, not brands, um, clothing articles that you got out there. So. Uh, yes, I'm the designer. It kind of started off of um, when we were talking about more what I could bring for Dose Heroics. And I remember sitting with Alex and thinking like, what did I do before? I 
wanted to do before I got into a career and I was in property management for a couple of years. And mm -hmm. before that I was a teacher. So oh. I was thinking, what did I want to do before I was a teacher? And I wanted to be a fashion designer when I was like really, really young kid. Um, but thought that wasn't very realistic. So I went on my fallback and did teaching um, and wasn't happy. So doing um, this where I'm designing the clothes and kind of seeing what outfits look good together, what colors look good together. It, has been a world of opening up just a lot of fun and creativity for me um but it mostly comes from these different like places or memories that i'll have so i take the designs i create them on like a photoshop or illustrator and mm -hmm. i use memories from past events to kind of piece together how i felt in the moment in the music so um something that i deal with just like personal thing is i have um synthesia which is where like you mix up uh sounds and, and sights or vision and sounds or um feeling and sounds sometimes smells are all mixed up your senses are all mixed up gotcha. so i'll seek sounds and so okay. some of my designs come from what i have seen in certain places wow. so like um one of them comes from my one of my first raves which is at the tabernacle in atlanta georgia and seeing um flux pavilion play super good show could not believe where i was i was <laughs> scared to death to go into the the pit that was below us um but it looked like so much fun we were having fun on the balcony where we were but i remember having this just big vision of this like yellow and green clover come up and i just felt lucky and it was this big feeling of luck and then looking at all the stained glass and the what well, used it used to be a church i think um yeah the time and it just, it all like kind of fell together and made this image in my head. And then I come out of it to see like, oh wait, no, I'm still at a concert. This isn't, I'm not in this world of color right now. This isn't <laughs> real. And I have to like kind of shake myself and get back to reality. Right. Um, but I, I look back on that and I'm able to kind of digitally piece together as close as I can to kind of represent what it felt like or what it looked like to me. So that's where all those pieces come from. They all come from a different memory club the stained glass love jersey which would be the stained glass love jersey which yeah, is the available yellow on our website. which is available on our website <laughs> <laughs> uh, the yellow and green one that's posted i think it's on the second page but um they're 50 dollars right now on our website so if you like it cool if you like the mask it also has a mask that goes with it um i have some matching socks too which are not but <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyway that's that's where all the designs kind of yeah. come from it comes from more of like a a place of this is where i wanted to be when i was a kid i wanted to like put together clothes and see what they look like and i'm starting kind of at the base of it where i get to make the fabric i get to see what i can make on like the actual fabric itself and you get to do the whole process of design to real life to every you get to see it all happen you brought up something yeah. while you were um describing it is that you had a passion for, for fashion and that you got to do that finally. And I can speak to both of you at this, so that you both have a passion for what you do. Tell me like, honestly, how, you know, how much easier does it make the job? I mean, it's something I have, that's, I have, one, I have one quote, just, I have one just, quote for this. Just, you I have one quote for this. <laughs> and if you do what you love, you will never work a goddamn day in your life. Well, yeah. Wait, I, I, Every piece that we do when it comes down to the things that we are passionate about, like when he's recording, when he's DJing, he's not working. He's just chilling. Yeah. And same with me when I'm piecing together the designs and looking at how they look on mock-up things, looking at how they look on digital stuff. It's just playing around with the colors for me. Like it's, yeah, it's just having a good time. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I can kind of make I money off like of this. <laughs> work, that way my friends can give me like some time to like actually focus on it. But other than that... <laughs> It's not work like it's Yeah. That's 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 the goal. I think that should be everybody's goal. It's so we're in such a money driven society, unfortunately. I think we can all recognize that. I mean, even I fall for fall short of that. I mean, my family very emphasized money growing up. And it's taken me till now to realize like maybe I should do something that makes me happy, you know? <laughs> as cliche as that sounds, but that's how a lot of people are raised and view and, and do and live, literally. They chase that money and, and there's nothing wrong with that, especially if they have a passion for that. Obviously there's a way to, to do it, but I'm slowly, slowly turning over the envelope and getting more and more like, I just want to do something I like. I don't really care 
just want to do stuff I like so it doesn't feel like I'm working every day. I mean, like, I'm sure we've, but all of us have had a job where we go in and it's just like, <sighs> like I'm, I'm here, <laughs> you know, to not to not be, um, sin- s- uh, oh my god, I did not say that word right at all. But not to be like, I can't even say the word. S- s- um, I can't say it. I'm not even gonna try to say it. Forget it. <laughs> but not to talk bad about a place of work or something. But there are jobs we've all had at some point that just you're like, this is just too much. I'm drained. This is not fun to me, and. Sometimes, you know, you do have to tough that out and everyone's situation is different. But at the end, your end goal should always be to try to get to some place where you are just happy with what you're doing. Because like you said, you don't have to work a day uh, in your life when you're doing what you love. Mm-hmm. And it's, um, I feel like you're right in that where a lot of us are taught that you should do something that you'll make money out or you'll, yeah. you should do something that has a high income or has a high salary or is a safe thing to get at, which is partially like why I went into I went into teaching and why I kind of gave up on the fashion stuff in the beginning is because that's what I thought would be the best line I thought that would be the best um, thing to do for my future and then um, what is it like two years in our relationship it just went nope <laughs> it's like that doesn't make you happy no what are you doing, like, <laughs> what are you doing? why are you doing it so, what um, yeah because <laughs> duh and and, just, and- that up, so. you know yeah. part of it i i don't see there's anything wrong with like some people might take a path where they learn something at first right they might um go to a, take a corporate job and it's teaching them one side of something and they eventually want to get out you know that that's that, that that's a strategic move i don't want to like negate people that are like oh, i hate what i'm doing right now i should quit but like if you have an idea of like okay i'm going to do this for two years get this experience and then use it to go do what i really want to do like that's something you might, you know, so I don't want to negate that. That's something some people might have to do and, and that's perfectly fine too, but understand your plan and make sure you have that long-term vision of like, okay, it's got to do two years. So I'm doing, and I'm out and I'm doing my own thing. You know, don't, don't give yourself, Oh, I'm going to do four, you know, keep or like, write that note down every day and look at that. Like I'm doing two years cause I want to do this. I'm learning this so I can do this, you know, have that vision. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, and sometimes you got to do that, you know? Uh, I mean, yeah. if it's a if it's a means to an end, you better yeah. be damn sure you know what that end is going towards. Exactly. I, I really sympathize with you growing up thinking that you know money was the most important. I I you know I don't know if it was the way I was raised or the environment that I was in, but it was always you have enough money, you'll be able to not have enough problems, so you'll have the space to be happy. So I you know I went to I went to school and I I studied finance and that, and I yeah. got eight I got eight semesters in you know, uh, halfway through my senior year. And I actually came back from a Tipper and Friends concert. So, you know, I'm a little, I'm a little come downy on that Monday. <laughs> and I'm sitting there and I finished my work for the day. So I'm looking for jobs. I'm going down Indeed. And I'm on like the 10th page of Indeed for people in my, for people in my line, or for anything that I could have been doing mm-hmm. when I got out of school. And the entire time I'm sitting there saying, oh, I would hate this. I would hate this. This is not me. And I looked around at this office. I said, I can't, I can't do this. <laughs> So I, I, and it was too late for me to just change my major. So yeah. I finished, I finished up school and then after that, I spent two years on what I, I call it YouTube university and just teaching myself just straight off of YouTube, how to record, how to make my own music. And I completely flipped it in two years into a recording business, man. I learned more on YouTube in my spare time baked than trying to do something that I love than <laughs> I ever did in the four and a half years of school and it blows Dude, my mind speak the fucking truth man for real i'm <laughs> there's two things i want to take away from that two one you mentioned you went to school for finance and and you're like by the time i was realized i don't want to do it it was kind of too late to change personally speaking i think you made a smart decision at that point because like how you know you'd have been done another four years of school like that would suck and that's yeah. something like it's so tough navigating college i had a podcast with one of the uh one of my good friends where we talked about that like just navigating college and figuring out what you want to do and instead of you know like what you say i i have tons of friends that were in the same boat like all of a sudden they get to their third year and they're like i fucking hate this like but like they have 10 credits left and it's like i just what am i you know what am i gonna do right but i really want to point out like you got that finance degree and it did kind of help you now you got your own business you know it kind of kind of came to a means to an end even though you didn't mean it to but it is useful then that's something what was it 
No, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, it is, it, it, and that's a smart thing too. I, I would stress to some people is, is if you know some people's parents might make them want to go to college or something. Maybe you find something that you think you can use later on. I mean, what marketing? For instance, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I didn't want to go to college, I, so I chose marketing for that reason. I figured, fuck it, I'm gonna get something that I think will touch a little bit of everything, and it'll probably help me run my own business one day. And I just chose marketing. And granted, I loved it, so it worked out. But you know, that's not everyone's scenario. But it's it's something to throw out there. And then, uh, um, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. All right. my, 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 no, my dude, go for it. I was gonna. Uh... Um, I was fortunate enough that I had at least studied something that worked with me wanting to be an entrepreneur. So I was like, yeah. all right, I'm not completely screwed. Like, I should stay in here. Yeah. But could you imagine if I was going for, like, biology or something? <laughs> if I realized I didn't want to work in a labor- or laboratory? Or, like, laboratory. You know, five years on an- <laughs> my laboratory. <laughs> I'm actually, we're, we're actually podcasting from the lab. <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I had this friend. In, I had this friend in college. He was a year. Or he was a year younger than me. He said, "Man, I hate all of the work I do, but I, man, once this is done, I'm gonna have an accounting job. So I'll have a job. Accounting sucks, man. Like not to just blow my anything. head off. I would blow my head off. But I absolutely like knowing that it's not what you want to do. Like I, I hope he got out of it. But. <laughs> The other thing you brought up was YouTube and how you learn a lot off YouTube. Man, I've said that before too on this podcast. I can't stress that enough to people. If you want to learn something, it's on it's on the internet and you can watch it online on YouTube. If you really want to just not even like read, you can just watch it and just learn. It's crazy. I mean, I'm that's something I wrote down and for my New Year's resolution was to start learning. I have a list of things I want to learn. And at first nice. I got really like cluttered with like oh my god i should start this one no i start this one blah 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 and then finally i put them down in order like learn this one first and this one then this one then this one and i just started doing youtube videos here and there my goal is to do a one youtube video a day to learn but sometimes that's really hard for me to get in but like that's super easy so for instance like my first thing on my list was to learn stock, stock trading and options trading and just because i can do that on the side and make money on the side like why not and yeah, for, sure. <laughs> for three or four months straight, I just did YouTube videos and, and read up on stocks and stuff. And now I'm at a pl- place where I feel pretty comfortable with what I'm doing. And now I'm like, okay, I'm ready to start the next thing on my list. You know, I don't have to be a professional at it, but enough to where I like, don't think I'll lose my money like ridiculously quick, you know, do some long-term more investments, yada, yada, not to bore people. But like, yeah, you learn a little bit of it, get your skin in the game and you start to see the green go up. You're like, I think I'm pretty good. <laughs> My my thing with trading is I keep getting humble, but every time I every time I do well, I'll hop into like a short term options thing and just get rocked. Gosh, <laughs> dude, short term options are the biggest trap ever. Yes, you can make some good money, but <laughs> goddamn, do I lose way more money on short term options than I make money? I just stopped doing short term options in general. I'm like, fuck it, I'm not doing that no more. Uh, it was it was either music or it was short term options, and my mental health would let me make it short term options <laughs> twice, a, twice a week. So. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so funny. Um, you guys got a podcast or anything going? No, I no. told you I was going to ask this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, it's you time, man. It. You got to get one, dude. They're awesome. I mean, I did the, I do this once a week. I have one show that comes out once a week. Might up it to two if I get more time. We'll see. It's in the works potentially. But I mean, once a week, get your brand out a little bit more. Tie it into Dose to Heroic some way or another. Um. I highly recommend it. I know it's like the market's getting very flooded with podcasts, but it's just another way to get a voice out. Rather, you know, social media, you can put content out, you can put pictures, you can put videos, but podcasting allows you to put your voice out there um, and really give your followers and people that are with you an idea of where you stand and and your values and what you want to do with your brand in a sense, you know? So. I feel like I already have the space for it here too. I mean, it wouldn't be too hard to put together. I feel like I just need to, on it, yeah, it's one of those things I really need to do, and I appreciate you having us on because it really, I mean, other than every all the help you've given us, and, you know, it's but it's been so much fun, and that fun. makes me yeah. feel like I would want to do it more. My whole thing was, oh, this is going to be work. We've been just we've been chilling. We've been hanging. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love doing this. I, it is it like I said, it, do I want this to come into something? I would love for it to eventually come into something, but it is to me, it's also just a hobby. Like I love just sitting down with somebody random, and, and, and like I said, I didn't even know you guys really till today i mean we sat down for the first time today and we talked beforehand for about 30 40 minutes or whatever and then we started recording but like 
Well, look at that. We're just chilling now. It's been a good, great conversation. Right. We're having back and forth, and I love doing this with, with all different, again, all different people from Walks of Life, getting to know their story, getting to know what they're doing. It's it's so much fun. I, I don't know what your podcast would entail. I don't know how you would do it. It's something we can definitely bounce around uh, yeah. for, for for sure, but I, I'd highly recommend doing one if you can. So if you, if you can fork out the time for it. Yeah, for sure. Um, well, Ajax Blue, I loved having you guys on. We're about a, a, an hour and 10 minutes here, so I'm going to actually call it quits for us. Um, I don't want to take too much of your time because we're actually probably going on two hours if you count before. So um, I loved having you guys on, though. Uh, definitely let's do this again, and uh, maybe we'll hang out in person uh, sometime if I make my way out to Orlando again. Um, yeah, for sure. Let us know. I'll see you in the pit at Lost Lands for that sure. We'll, we'll make sure. <laughs> if we go to a festival, we'll make sure to meet up for that. No doubt about it. No doubt about I'm, it. I had no idea two hours passed. Time flew by, so feel free to reach out to us anytime, buddy. Jacob, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Yeah, I loved having good you guys luck, on. Good luck with all the work you're doing, man. You're doing a great job. I appreciate that a lot, and same to you. Same goes to you, both of you. It's awesome. I like. I love it. I love the website. I love the brand. I'll make sure to put it in the uh, podcast description so people can check it out. But... Dose to rogues, everybody. I'll Ajax and blow blue. Woo, I almost said that wrong. All right, everybody. Enjoy. <laughs>